Okay, and if you're gonna carry out inference for the slope, um, you wanna make sure that the conditions for inference are met. So to do that, we're gonna use some residual plots. It's really straightforward to plot the residuals and jump, and there's a note about how to do it on your reference sheet. Um, so I'm going back to this Honda Civics data. I've already um, fit the regression model. I'm gonna go down here where it says linear fit, and I'm gonna choose plot residuals. And it gives me a bunch of different plots. Um, the main ones that we're going to use are um, the residual by predicted plot here, and then a slightly different version of it, the residual by x plot. Let's start with the residual by x plot because it's a little bit easier to explain. Um, so basically the residual by x plot, you're putting residuals on the y-axis and then your explanatory variable on the x-axis. So basically anything that was positive here, positive um, residuals, so those are points that are above the line, are going to be above zero here, right? So you can sort of see how the points um, correspond to the other ones. Another way you can imagine it is that you're taking your regression line and flattening it out. So like imagine that you're like pulling this in down until you make your regression line flat and horizontal, um, and then that's going to be the shape of your residual plot. That's another way to think about it. Um, so the residual by predicted plot, this is very similar, except that instead of using the explanatory variable on the x-axis, you're using the y hat values on the axis. Um, but it's not really a big deal because you're going to read these two plots the same way. Okay, so let's look at how you use this to check the conditions. Okay, for linearity, when you look at the scatter plot or the residual plot, um, you don't want to see any kind of curved pattern. Okay, so for the scatter plot, um, you want it to be a roughly linear shape. And for the residual plot, you want it to just be this random cloud of points around zero. Okay, so this is actually a nice one um, because we don't see any curve here. So this would be good for a residual plot. We don't want to see something like this um, because this would indicate that we have a non-linear relationship. Another thing that we can look at in the residual plot is constant variance. So what we want is something like this. We want the vertical spread to be the same at the low end and the high end of the scale. So this one looks really nice, right? We've got the same vertical spread no, ma no matter where we are on the x-axis. Compare that to this one, where you have um, a really small vertical spread on one end and a large vertical spread on the other end. Um, this is not what we want to see. Um, sometimes you hear this called a funnel shape. Um, and if you have a funnel shape, um, that's going to be an indication of non-constant variance. Okay, so we're checking both of those conditions with the same plot, um, but we're looking for different things. The third condition is that we want our residuals to be normally distributed. Um, so luckily, it kind of gives us a histogram um, when we look at the residual by predicted plot. It's sideways, but you can still read it. So what we're looking for here is we want it to be, you know, roughly unimodal, pretty symmetric. Obviously, we don't expect it to be perfect, um, but we want that rough, normal shape. Um, what we don't want to see is something like this one, where we would have skewed residuals. So if we have strong skew in the residuals, that would be a violation of normality. So this one is not good. Um, or if we saw something like this, where it's sort of evenly distributed across, this is definitely not bell-shaped. So either one of these, if you had um, something skewed or something that's just clearly um, not bell-shaped, both of these would indicate that you have non-normality. Okay, and you'll have opportunities to practice um, looking at graphs and deciding if your conditions have been met.